Lynn Taylor and welcome back to Data Cabling Expert TV. I'm joined by Danny Kindow who is our sponsor and he's going to be talking to us about risk avoidance. So you're working in a relatively unregulated young industry. So what are the major pitfalls? The major pitfalls are unbranded products that come in from the Far East. So what is the problem there? There's no regulation to the product. There's no necessarily no guarantee, no warranty. You don't actually know the source of the product, where it's come from. So you have no quantification of the product. So you have no traceability of the product and where it's manufactured. And what would this lead to if you did have a product that wasn't um, legitimate, should we say? Well, it will lead to a, a, an extra cost, an added cost, if the product is inferior and doesn't work properly. It'll add to a, a lot of extra cost that's not been quantified to the installer. So aside from ripping out the product, the inferior product, there's all the time, the manpower time, the cost of people being on site that wasn't gauged when they first looked at the product. And with this inferior product, you could miss deadlines which then cause added costs because you've signed to an agreed deadline date to complete the project. And other contractors on site are waiting for you to complete the contract for the cabling and hence cause problems and potential legalities on site. So surely, Danny, if I buy products that have a fantastic warranty, surely I'm safe? You have to know that the source is a reputable manufacturer. There's lots of products that come in from the Far East, for instance, and they claim they have a warranty, but that warranty, how far does that go? How much is it worth the warranty? An actual reputable manufacturer in the UK will provide you with a third party certification, and that's what you should be looking for. How would I know? What, what, what would be the key signs of me getting something which was, in, which was an inferior product as opposed to a non-inferior product? Again, a lot is based around reputation. So the manufacturers that my company supply have been around for 20, 25 years in this industry. So they've got a lot of credence. But they also have their product backed by a third party, an independent audit of their product set. So that what they're selling is actually audited and the client actually has a statement of third party certification, which I think is key. So Danny, what about the type of manufacturer and the support that they can give? Is there a big difference? There is, yes. Um, w with a UK-based manufacturer, the general consensus is you have a pre-sales support and a post-sales support. And by that, that's a technical assistance. So prior to any project being delivered, you can call on that manufacturer to de help design the project during the project can use their expertise to deliver it and after the project to audit the site and that you can't get from everyone that is something that with the third party certification that confirms the manufacturer's standing in the in the, in the industry so do you get any kind of mot i don't know, like when i take my car in i have to have an mot do you get any kind of sort of warranty like you do. that for instance one manufacturer that we supply on behalf of theirs is a 25 year product warranty so failure on any of their product within that 25 years will be replaced free of charge on site <laughs> can you replace me in 25 years <laughs> no lynn you're priceless oh, charmer. <laughs> so getting a manufacturer involved in the project would that save money in the long term yes it would bringing their skill set into the equation both before and after and including the duration of the project will save them money in the long term and will give them peace of mind. But there must be some hidden costs, Danny, come on. <laughs> there must be. <laughs> no, no, in fairness, part of signing up to an agreed manufacturer's warranty programme means that it's part of the service, it's free of charge. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm convinced. <laughs> so let's talk about SLAs. How can we use those to reduce commercial risk? But if you use my business MBM as an example, the SLAs that we have in place with our clients, what that allows them is peace of mind. They instruct us to deliver product on site, on time, and our SLA means that we have to do that. So again, that means that product that is being shipped doesn't arrive late on site. 
So an SLA focuses the distribution partner like myself and the staff that deliver those projects. It, it focuses the mind to make sure that those products are delivered when the client wants and that, hence that saves him money. It's basically you're talking about peace of mind and saving money. Completely. Now I love getting money back. <laughs> Don't we all? No, yeah, exactly. So let's talk about rebates. Okay, well, in, in, again, an example of our business, sales rebates are quite a critical part of retaining clients and, again, showing a willingness on our part to work with those. A rebate will give back money to those that spend money with us. And, again, that's adding value to their relationship with us. So a sales rebate is, can be perceived in, in many ways, but the way I look at that is it, it entices a, a client, a potential client or an existing client, to engage with my business to supply more product and purchase orders to me on the basis that they understand then at the end of the 12-month period they will return a credit note of X amount of money. That structure is how we determine between each account. So the more you spend the more you get as a rebate? In essence, yes, that's correct, yes. Okay, but the whole essence is that you want to make sure that people don't spend too much, though. The way you structure the rebate, is if the, if the rebate is successful, if you set that up in, with the correct terms, the more they spend, the more they do get. But in essence, for me, the way I look at that, if I can get more value from that client, I don't mind giving back some of that money because it's retained his loyalty to my business. It's a win-win situation. It is a win-win situation. <laughs> so are you unique or are these rebates offered widely? I'd have to say there's a small number of distribution partners that offer them. It's not for everyone, uh, but it works for our business. And I think it's been proven that offering those services can allow my business to grow. Thanks, Danny. Thanks, Lynn. Well, join me in the next part of the series where we're going to find out about the real cost of data cabling. And it's not just about costs. So join me then and I'll see you soon.